Beyond the river of the blessed, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Avalon. Our swords were shattered in our hands, and we hung our shields on the oak tree. Silver towers were fallen into a sea of blood. How many miles to Avalon? None, I say, and all silver towers are fallen. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Rogers of Lavney's The Guns of Avalon. The Guns of Avalon is book two in the Chronicles of Amber, which I have reviewed the first book, Nine Princes in Amber, for those curious who want to go watch that. But it is a 1972 novel by, well, I don't know, what would you call him? A grandmaster? <laughs> One of the great uh, authors of sci-fi, fantasy, uh, Zelazny. Um, now, <clears throat> like in Nine Princes of Amber, uh, Corwin has failed to defeat his brother Eric and take the throne. And so that struggle to get Amber, which is the real world, continues. And the effects of this war can be felt throughout Shadow. So Corwin has recovered from his imprisonment, but he is still somewhat emaciated, at least at the start of the story. And it starts right after the first one. Um, it really, you could probably combine the first five novels into one novel. At least that's probably what would happen today, to be honest. Um, so because they're so short in fact they probably be released as novellas but anyways they are technically novels as far as i'm aware so at the beginning of the story though he happens upon an injured knight in a forest of shadow of avalon and he goes to a place called well actually the place is called lorraine but he goes there to meet someone named ganelon and there he also meets sir lancelot and a woman named lorraine who is a camp follower but also somewhat of a serious we also meet Dara, who's probably the most interesting of all those characters, and things are not quite clear with her. But again, Corwin and Eric both have some interesting developments in this story, and, well, it's kind of surprising, honestly, but none of these characters are straight up good or bad. They're rather human and gray. And this is, of course, told in the immersive first-person point of view with a very easy and modern language used. It's uh, contemporary for the time. It's not flowery at all it's not purple it doesn't try to be somewhat archaic it's just what you would write like if you were writing in your journal or something and so it does our narrator corwin does somewhat uh ramble sometimes he also gives in like funny interjections and he even breaks the fourth wall and uh again corwin is kind of a demigod but he comes off as like a petty teenager as well and it's just really interesting stuff going on here. It's a great story from the weird multiverse. Uh, we get to see some new places and some old that we saw in the first book. It's a cool fantasy, but it also quotes from our world since it exists in this one. Uh, and since, and, I mean, considering the first book started in 1970s New York, I'd have a hard time defining the genre on this one, uh, kind of like the first book. And that's okay because it's all over the place. And that's awesome. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, I do need to get to the third book and then the fourth and fifth book. I should, they're not very long at all. Um, I think if you were to combine that together, like audiobook time would probably be like 18 hours, maybe. That's, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I actually don't have them all physically. I have the next one physically, um, which is the sign of the unicorn, but I need to get four and five still. And then I'll probably get to the fifth, uh, well, the next five books, which are the second cycle later. But overall, I don't have a lot to say on this one besides the fact, um, that it explores this genre thing like pretty well it explores our character who's gray pretty well um the modern dialogue uh, modern just writing in general is great i mean you'll even get references from like our world like he talks about a conversation i was sleeping for it a couple times actually and then uh, you also get uh some sexual stuff in this one you also get more demons or they seem to be of something called chaos um, which I'm sure we'll find out more about in the next couple books. But I don't really have much more to say on this besides the fact that I really enjoyed it. It's really tiny. I need to get to the rest of the books. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'll catch you later.